the most can stand in the valley of Ajalot. It is time for heaven to have their victory. Let the warriors of heaven arise. Let the mighty men, let them come to war. Let them pin their plowshares into swords, their pruning hooks into spears for the time of war. Welcome to today's edition of the Spirit Live with Apostle Emmanuel. Jesus is alive. Wow, what a day. Today I have a very, very special message to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants me to tell you this one. He said, there's nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing. Like cold, ever be, anything like a powerful prayer. Right? He's on the screen, just read that. There is nothing like a powerful prayer. Yeah, it's true. And I want to tell you why he says, I should tell you this. Because a lot of Christians have suffered from this concept of a powerful prayer. So people are looking for ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical, theological, all kinds of frameworks to use to determine what would make my prayer powerful. And then there are those who are fasting for years. Um, there are those who are sleeping up, waking up at night to pray from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. There are those who pray all night, all trying to make powerful prayers. And someone said to me, does God still answer prayers? And because you're not sure they're getting answers, or they are praying, this and not happening, they are constantly hopping from one place to another, looking for powerful prayers to pray, or sometimes looking for people who know how to pray powerful prayers. And for their books written, oh, how to pray powerful prayers, and how to mix the words, what scriptures to use, what verses to use. This is heresy. This is wrong. This is wrong. And it only leads to weakness. There's nothing like a powerful prayer. Turn your Bible with me, and let us look at the, what the scripture says in James chapter 5. We read from verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, Confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another, that you may be helped, you may be healed, restored to a spiritual tone and mind and heart. The, and then he says this, which is important, the B part of it says, the earnest, which is the heartfelt, which is continued, prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic power, dynamic in his workings. Yeah, you know, this is not just, when he says tremendous power, this power is not just about, you know, energy or a force. This is like when you, when you set a rocket right an intergalactic uh, intercontinental missile and you aim with precision with the geolocation of where you want it to hit and you launch it from from somewhere in the world to another part of the world and that rocket goes up and goes straight to that location before it explodes or like we see on television military weapons you know when a, a fighter jet sets out a, a you know a, a bullet and it travels Targeting the object with which it was directed at. That's what it means. There is a tremendous power available, which is it has aim, it has purpose, it has it has energy, it has inherent capacity. It doesn't run out. It doesn't run out of energy. It does not lose steam or momentum or force or velocity. It continues until it reaches its aim and concludes its purpose. He says the prayer of a righteous man makes that power available. So all you could say is amen. All you may say is in the name of Jesus, so shall it be. All you could say is I command. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter how good you are with the language or the grammar or the English. What is important is, are you righteous? And yes, you are. I bring you good news. You're righteous. Because righteousness is a gift of God. When you become born again, become a Christian, he gives you his righteousness. That's why he said, if your righteousness do not exceed that of the Pharisees, forget it. You will not see the kingdom of heaven. But even more so, he's saying that your righteousness, no matter what it is, even if it exceeds that of the Pharisees, say, they are like filthy rags. It means that they come to nothing. Therefore, there is no works of hand. There is no actions, no activity, no combination of efforts, words, actions, or deeds. Fasting, uh, and whatever it is you do, that will make your prayer to be powerful. Except on the day you believe 
that Jesus Christ is your righteousness and that you have right standing with God and you have received the power of attorney as a son of God which you became the day you gave your life to Christ to use the name of Jesus. That power that you have in his name by his righteousness you can now speak words and they come to pass. You can now declare the decrees of God. You can now establish a thing and so it becomes. That is what a powerful person does because we don't pray powerful prayers. It's powerful people who pray to the Almighty God. Join me and read verse 17 of the same James chapter 5. And I want you to pay attention to this. It says, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have. In other words, Prophet Elijah of all time, with feelings, affections, and a constitution like ours. In other words, everything that could affect you affected him. In fact, he ran away from Jezebel. When she said, I'm going to kill you. If I don't kill, let me, you know, swore by her, whatever, that she will kill him. And he ran away. So Elijah felt everything we could feel. However, this is what he says about Elijah. He said, and he prayed. Oh, and he prayed. He prayed earnestly. What does it mean to pray earnestly? Compassion, passionate prayer. A prayer that is not surface. It's not based on just the words or speaking of the words. A prayer that is earnest, heartfelt. A prayer that is earnest, heartfelt. He said he prayed this prayer for it not to rain. And no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again. And the heaven supplied rain. And the hand, the land produces crops. I want you to watch this short video of a, a prayer that sometimes you get confused about. Just watch this. Now, there you go. That's prayer. As I watched that, you know, I was watching, I was on the edge of my, my, my seat. You see, you may look at them and wonder, why are they taking those postures? Must they pray that way? Must they do this? Well, the difference is, you may pray that way or not pray that way. The most important is who is praying. Who is praying? Is that thing that you saw them do, is that what makes it powerful? No. It's who is praying. It's why, it's who is praying. I remember one day I traveled in Addis, um, when I was still ministering in Addis, I traveled out of the country, I came back, and I was going to a, a service. And um, I was tired, so I didn't do a lot of, you know, there was not a lot of promotions, and not a lot of people I heard I was coming. I said, Lord, the testimony that is going ahead of me shall be this, that the day I shall arrive, by four o'clock, let a sandstorm arise. And let us stand some send people home that they may know a man of God is arriving in their city. The next day, I said, Father, the second day, I want the sky to be divided into two. Let one part be bright as day while I'm there, where the part where I'm ministering in the city, the part of the city where I'm going to be ministering at, and the other part where I'm not going to be ministering at, let it be covered in dark clouds. And then the third day, the moment I leave the hotel, let it rain. As I get to the venue, let the rain stop. Let this be the testimony that you give that I am your servant and I've come to bring the message of deliverance to your people. Child of God, and so it was. It was in the papers, it was in the news. Listen, when you know for sure, as you know now, that you are righteous, and that righteousness is a gift from God, it has nothing to do with what you have done right or wrong. That righteousness is a gift from God. When you know it, and you believe, as I have just said, whatever it is you are doing right now, stop it. 
begin to pray. And watch miracles happen. Whatever you thought you prayed that didn't get answered, pray again now. With this knowledge, pray. The Bible says, with this, make war. Get up your feet and begin to make war. Remember the earnest and continued prayer. The earnest and continued prayer. One is of compassion. The other one is persistent. Even if it was not meant for you, you can pray it into your corner. Even if it was not coming your way, you can pray it into your direction. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Even if the job was told to you, it's no longer yours. You can pray it back to Hosha. You can say nobody will sit on that desk. Or I mean, of course, don't turn yourself into a manipulative entity because it doesn't work. The righteousness that you receive in Christ Jesus is just. Child of God, prayer moves mountains. No wonder there's been an attack from Satan that says prayer does not work. And, and I want you to see this video. Just watch this one. Watch this for a minute and then we'll come back and see. <laughs> There you see the image. This image is showing Africans are praying, and while Africans are praying, the Chinese are manufacturing chips. Well, I don't really believe this is entirely correct. Because truly, when you pray, what happens? Because when I pray, ideas come. When I pray, revelations come of the Spirit. When I pray, insight is given to me. When Abraham spoke with God and God told him what will happen for four generations of his family, that is prayer. When Noah received from God the dimensions, the height and width of what the, uh, you know, the, uh, the ark should be, he was in prayer because prayer is communication, right? And that communication can be an act of ordering, giving authority or giving decrees, making decisions or having conversations with God. Remember and never forget it. The prayer of a righteous man is what makes changes happen. And you are already righteous. Stop stressing yourself about how to make it powerful. It is powerful because it's you pray. God bless you. Until I see you next time, before I go, let me read you. There's something I want to tell you. If you want us to join and pray with you on something, if you want us to join faith with you to pray, send us an email. Write us an email. Shoot us a WhatsApp message. We'll be excited to lift you and hold your hand in prayer. That the prayer of two, the agreement of two, nothing shall be impossible unto us. God bless you. Jesus is alive. We worship you. We worship your name, Jesus. Thank you for giving us the name, Jesus. Now we are sons of God and God the same. We worship you.